So a really big storyline that I don't think has been talked about a whole lot late recently is that Bo Nickel recently decided to open up an ATT affiliate, or at least announced that he will be opening up an ATT affiliate in State College, Pennsylvania. State College is where Penn State is centered at, and Penn State, of course, is the dominant D1 wrestling program that has won, I believe, eight of the last nine NCAA Division One wrestling championships. They produced a handful of really good um, MMA fighters as well, guys like Ed Ruth, uh, Phil Davis, and a few others. And Bo Nickel is talking about how he wants to get into MMA after he is done with this Olympic cycle in wrestling. And so there's two parts to the story. Part of it is Bo Nickel and his transition in MMA, into MMA and how good of a prospect he is. But then the other half is by opening up a gym that is closely affiliated with the Penn State wrestling team, uh, what kind of effect that could have in terms of producing future MMA fighters uh, in the years to come, whether that's in five years, 10 years, and beyond. Uh, so let's go through the story here from the body lock. So it says former Penn State wrestler Bo Nichols has been vocal about his plan to transition down the world of, of MMA. doesn't expect to travel far to get things started. Uh, announced where his plan will begin. He says, my plan right now is to start a gym in State College, Pennsylvania, and a partner with American Top Team. Uh, he's a three-time NCAA champion and Hodge Trophy winner. Hodge Trophy is a trophy given to the most dominant wrestler in college wrestling. Uh, so not only has he won a national title or won three national titles, but then in one of the years that he won a national title of all the national champions, which is 10, he was determined to be the most dominant of them. So this is the kind of wrestler that Bo Nickel is, and that's who MMA is going to be getting once he transitions from wrestling into MMA. Uh, it says we're going to have an ATT up here in State College and be able to access all the resources of ATT. At the same time, be able to bring Penn State wrestling closer to the MMA world and elevate the level of wrestling in MMA and get a lot of athletes and guys to come out of Penn State and other wrestling programs. Give them the opportunity to train here and give other guys that maybe didn't train wrestling growing up, don't have a wrestling background, the opportunity to get the best wrestling training in the world, uh, which is actually pretty neat in, in that once you get into jiu-jitsu, especially if you're an adult, it's hard to find places to, to train wrestling because most wrestling programs are, are based around kids, whether it's a kid's wrestling program itself, whether it's just the teams, like a high school team or a college team. Uh, so the idea there that this ATT in Penn State is going to have a really, a really big wrestling component, and a lot of people who train out there will have access to really good wrestlers, even if you aren't from the Penn State wrestling team. I think that's actually pretty neat. Then it says, of course, the plan will be, will be to have a big – or the plan will have a big impact on Nickel himself. Uh, I'm super excited to stay in State College, Nickel said, to stay close to my friends and family and team and coaches and continue improving, getting better, and making a lot of waves in the MMA community and the MMA world. Uh, the announcement was the latest step step toward the sport for Nickel. Uh, okay. Uh, and then on Monday, first round management CEO Malki Kawa announced that Nickel had signed with them. Uh, I said the plan is to do the Olympics in 2020 and then start fighting. Uh, and then from here, uh, they're talking about Anthony Kassar, who is a, the current heavyweight champion for Division One wrestling. He'll he'll be wrestling for Penn State again this year, uh, but probably will be doing MMA after that. Uh, they're talking about how, how he's getting interested in it. Uh, so having this program out in Penn State, I'm sure not only will it benefit Bo Nickel, but it also benefit Kassar if he wants to stay in State College once he transitions to MMA, if that's where he wants to train. Um, and then they're also talking about how Phil Davis, Ed Ruth, Bubba Jenkins um, were all successful MMA fighters after wrestling in Penn State. So... For Bo Nickel, uh, of those guys that were mentioned, the Ed Ruth, Ed Ruth, um, Phil Davis, and Bubba Jenkins, definitely a strong argument can be made, and I would definitely make that argument that Bo Nickel is the, the best college wrestler among them, uh, and that's including all those guys who are former champions. Uh, I believe Pat Cummins also wrestler, wrestled at Penn State and has had a decent career in MMA. Uh, hasn't been as good as a lot of people think he, he could be. One of those guys where they talk about how in the room he looks like a guy who could potentially be a UFC champion, but just hasn't really had that translate in the octagon. Uh, but at times, it's still been ranked in the UFC light heavyweight division. Uh, but again, these are all former Penn State wrestlers. But in terms of just pure wrestling, Bo Nickel uh, probably has the best style to translate over to MMA. And not just that, he's probably been the most dominant wrestler, uh, a U23 world champion this year. Uh, so for wrestling, the bigger world championships, you have U23 and then you have senior level. Senior is just the adult version. I, I don't know why they call it senior. Uh, in, in other sports, senior would mean like it's like the the old people got the old people championships, but in, in wrestling, senior just means adult. Uh, so there's that. And in some cases, if you're under 23 and you make the senior level team for your country, you're not going to do under U23s. For Bo Nickel, he wasn't able to make the senior level team for the U.S. because the guy who he lost to, Jaden Cox, is a three-time world champion. So unfortunately for him, in a sport where you can only send one person per country. Though Bo Nickel is more than good enough to compete at the senior level and be one of the top guys in the world because he's a part of the same country that has the world champion, he can't go. A uh, stupid thing, but that's that's how wrestling works. Uh, but, but he was able to make the U23 team, uh, goes out to compete for the U23 world title, and ends up winning that. So 
for him, it'll be interesting to see what he's able to do this year leading up to the Olympics. I don't know whether or not he's going to be able to make the Olympic team because, again, he's going to have to get through a world champion to do it. But if he doesn't, still a great wrestling prospect who now is going to have access to some some decent training uh, with the ATT affiliate up in Penn State or up in State College. It would be a fairly safe assumption that with all the black belts who are part of the ATT system that they're going to send at least one or two up to State College to run the jiu-jitsu program there and help out with the grappling aspect to it. Uh, I'm sure they'll send out some decent striking coaches as well. So though it's not clear who's going to be sent out there and who's going to be coaching there, you would definitely have to assume that there's going to be some good guys out there, and that's definitely going to help out Bo Nickel. And he's a guy who you're definitely going to want to see. I'm not sure who's going to be able to sign him first. I don't think the UFC, they typically haven't signed great prospects, guys like Aaron Pico, Bo Nickel, or other top wrestlers. That's just usually something Bellator does. And the UFC will kind of wait until they're deeper in their career and they've actually picked up some wins before they sign them. Um, but with some of the developmental contracts they've done, especially around the contender series, it'd be interesting to see if the UFC tries to reach out to Bo Nickel and sort of like get him on a contender series next year. And if he gets a win there, then just kind of hang on to him, sort of like with what they had done with other guys in the past. Um, or if someone like Bell or someone like Scott Coker and Bellator is able to scoop him up. But with this being a, a storyline that I think affects uh, Penn State in, in terms of them now having a jujitsu slash MMA program that's closely attached to the wrestling program. I think it's also worth mentioning that earlier this year, a similar thing happened at the University of Iowa, which also didn't get a whole lot of attention, more so less attention, because in this case, at least you have Bo Nickel who's tied to it, whereas with Iowa, it was just sort of something that happened over time. So Iowa has had a very good Jiu-Jitsu program for a while, but that program hasn't been that closely tied to the wrestling program. Uh, But recently, there was a gym opened up called Citadel Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Citadel is run by Matt Layden and Jim Kelly. Uh, James Kelly will talk about soon. Matt Layden, uh, excellent jiu-jitsu, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. He has wins over guys like Dante Leon. Uh, Tex Johnson was the North American grappler of the year for Abu Dhabi, uh, I believe, two years ago. Uh, so he, he, he's an excellent pure Jiu-Jitsu guy on his own. Jim Kelly recently got his black belt uh, from Tag Team and Jared Weiner. Um, but he is very closely tied to the wrestling program at Iowa. So there was a, a full feature done on Flow Wrestling about him. Uh, that was about 30 minutes long uh, back when they did Who's Number One about a month ago. Uh, but in brief, he runs the Hawkeye Re- or the uh, Eastern Iowa Wrestling Club, which is uh, more more centr- centered towards the the youth wrestling in Iowa. Uh, but he's very closely tied with the team. And with him opening up Citadel, he's brought in a lot of former Hawkeye wrestlers, guys like Tover Carton, but then also uh, former All American Alex Meyer, uh, who you can see once this pulls up right here, uh, who, who's also now training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and getting in the gi. So it, it looks as though for the University of Iowa, they're starting to get some of their former wrestlers in, into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu now. It'll be interesting to see if you take a guy with an All-American wrestling and start to get him into Jiu-Jitsu, get him to start winning some tournaments, uh, start learning um, some guard passing, some control, some submissions from top. It'll be interesting to see if some of these guys start to make transitions to MMA. Um, but if so, what we could be seeing, like I mentioned before, five, ten years down the line, is a, a more direct line between these top Division One wrestling programs and then... Um, whether you, you would call it a gym or like, like like a path to MMA. So interesting to see what's going on with Citadel and University of Iowa Jiu-Jitsu. Obviously also very interesting to see with the American Top Team affiliation and how that's all being tied into Penn State Wrestling. But to me, this could be the start of a very interesting a very interesting um, mainline transition from these top wrestling programs, which in the past have produced some pretty good MMA talent, but really now more of a direct transition from them going uh, on campus to the wrestling club to then going uh, pretty close to campus and then going to a, a gym that does Brazilian, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, kickboxing, MMA, and, and the rest of it, and being able to transition pretty quickly and pretty easily. So big story here and definitely want to make sure it was covered.